back with you once again. And as the Democrats continue uh, to try and convince the American women that the Republican Party is in some sort of mythical war with them. Oh, yes, the war on women continues. The war on women that none of us on the right actually knew that we were involved in. Uh, but nevertheless, as this supposed war continues, there's starting to be some indication that the Democrats are going to try and expand this strategy of convincing uh, people that the Republicans are at war with them and really we're not. Looks like they're going to try and expand this strategy to a few other different groups of people. Uh, last week, uh, our old buddy, good old Howard D. <laughs> Could you perhaps warn me before the next time you do that? You're going to be a heart attack over here. Jeez. Okay, old, old screaming Howard Dean was on the Ed Schultz show uh, last week, and he made some particularly interesting con uh, comments about who the uh, Republicans bash and who we're sort of at war with. Uh, let's listen to old screaming Howard himself. This party, the Republican Party, is gay bashing, Muslim bashing, Latino bashing, uh, immigrant bashing, women bashing every day. Okay, so according to Howard Dean, uh, the Republicans are out there bashing women and minorities and Muslims and gays and probably midgets. I don't know. He thinks we're bashing everybody. Evidently, he thinks we're, at, we're in some sort of war with all of these different people, much like we're supposedly at war with women. So that's a pretty heavy statement. Sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? I mean, if that were true, uh, that would not speak well of the Republican Party. I think we all would agree with that. But is it actually true? Are Republicans actually bashing women and Latinos and minorities and gays and Muslims and whomever else? Or is there more to what we stand for than just a simplistic vision that uh, Howard Dean and the media and even Barack Obama himself are putting forth about the GOP? Well, let's take a look at it. Let's examine what Republicans actually believe about some of these groups and what uh, the actual policies of Republicans have been recently, and let's make the judgment based on that. So let's go by th through some of these groups that Howard Dean mentioned. Let let's start with women, since he said we were bashing women, and since that alleged war on women is such a big topic right now, let's talk about that. Are Republicans actually at war with women? Well, let's go back to the beginning here. When this whole war on women controversy started up, think back, what was the actual issue that started the this meme about the war on women what what was the first shot that was fired what was the issue that brought all of this to play well if you recall if you go back and, and go go past all of the rhetoric and everything else the thing that started this whole ball rolling was simply the idea that religious institutions and insurance companies and other third parties uh our contention that those parties should not be forced by the government to pay for birth control if they do not choose to. That's it. That's all there was to it. Um, doesn't really seem all that warlike to me. I mean, and I understand that, that there's people out there that, that would disagree with me on my position on those issues, that maybe there, there's some people out there that think that the government should be forcing these third parties to pay for birth control, but even the those among that group who are reasonable, I think they would have to concede that Simply taking the opposite viewpoint does not amount to an all-out war on women. That seems like quite a leap, quite a stretch. We've heard Democrats infer and say that Republicans would, they, they want to ban birth control for women. They want to eliminate birth control. But think about it. Have you, in the last two, three months that this has been going on, have you heard any Republican advocate legislation that would ban any kind of birth control? No, you haven't. And we pointed that out on this program before. Even Rick Santorum said that while he's got personal issues with it, he's not looking for legislation that would actually go about banning birth control. So, so that was a, an overstatement on the part of the left, and perhaps even an out-and-out -out lie. Uh, nobody on our side has actually considered banning birth control. Uh, and in fact, more to the point, this might surprise some of you. The way most of us look at it, if some of these third parties of insurance companies, religious institutions, employers, whatever, if some of them want to pay for birth control for their employees or, or people who have that insurance policy or whatever, we've got no problem with that. 
If those third parties want to do that of their own volition, have at it. Go ahead. And who knows? It could happen. I mean, you could see a situation where maybe an insurance company thinks that they can get a foothold in the marketplace by appealing uh, to people that want birth control uh, paid for. So, okay, if you want to take that risk, go for it. No problem with it. All we've ever said is that government shouldn't be forcing these third parties, religious institutions, insurance companies, and the like, should not be forcing them, them to do it. That's all. That's all this whole controversy was about. Now, when you look at it in that framework, it does seem more than a little ridiculous, does it not, to say that that constitutes a war on women. It's anything but. Most of us have said all along, if a woman wants to, to use birth control, she should be able to buy however much of it she wants to. Our problem is just when you make me buy it or when you make someone else buy it. That's all the issue boils down to. Some war, huh? Okay, well, maybe that was just an isolated incident. Let, let's look at some of these other wars that we on the right supposedly have. What, what about the immigrant bashing that Howard Dean talked about or the uh, Latino bashing that he talked about? Well, I think that's uh, quite overstated as well. If you go back through this uh, primary season and you look at a lot of the debates, that it, the Republican debates that have been going on, and, uh, of course, at all of those debates, illegal immigration has been a, a hot-button topic. Makes sense because for most Republicans, illegal immigration is a pretty high-level issue in terms of its priority to, to those voters and, and certainly to myself. So has there been Latino bashing or immigrant, immigrant bashing? Well, I, I don't really think so. Instead, most of what we've seen during these debates with what all of the different plans that different candidates have put forth and the debate that has gone on about it, all of those plans, while they, they have their differences, seem to boil down to a pretty simple idea. And that simple idea is that we in the Republican Party simply wish to more effectively confirm and assure that those who immigrate to our nation are doing so legally. And that those who already are here illegally are brought to justice in a way that makes sense. That's it. Now, there's different ideas on how to get to that and how to do that, and we've had some very good discussion in these uh, presidential debates and in the campaign season of how exactly to do that, but all of the plans seem to go back to that very simple and, 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 and almost obvious point. The point is that uh, we just want to make sure that the immigrants here, uh, the, the immigrants that come here do so underneath the laws that we have that regulate such things, and that Anybody who's here illegally, that, that we know how to take care of that, and that we do take care of it in an effective way, that we don't just turn a blind eye to it. That's all. Is that immigrant bashing? No. I mean, immigrants who come here legally, we're pretty well fine with those. It's Now, maybe there's some vilification of illegal immigrants. I don't see why there would be a problem with that. Uh, you know, people that break the law probably should be vilified to a, to a degree. I don't know, call me crazy, but I think we should vilify people that murder other people or we should vilify bank robbers or, you know, vilify rapists. I mean, call me crazy, but vilifying criminals is not something I would think would be controversial. Maybe it's just me. Is it vilifying Latinos? Well, no, I mean, certainly not all illegal immigrants are Latinos and certainly not all Latinos are illegal immigrants. It's a pretty small portion of them, actually, one would think. And more to the point, there's a tremendous number of Latinos that have come over here legally, are, are, are here legally, maybe multiple generation folks or uh, people that, that came over here the right way through our laws. And I don't think it makes sense that for, for people to assume that those legal Latinos would in some way be sympathetic to illegal immigrants who are taking shortcuts and breaking the very rules that they have lived under to come over here and be productive citizens. So I think that's a little bit of a stretch to assume that Latinos would automatically side with illegal immigrants. That certainly doesn't make sense to me. But the bottom line is this. If you are an immigrant of whatever ethnicity, I don't care, but if you are an immigrant who came to America legally, then Republicans are totally down with you. We, we're fine with that. We love that. That's what this country's about. It's simply those that break the law when coming over here that we're focused on. That's where we find the issue. We're not bashing immigrants, we're bashing illegal immigrants. We're not bashing Latinos, we're bashing a very small number of people within that group who came over here under the dead of night illegally. That's where the problem is. Certainly doesn't sound like a war on immigrants or a war on Latinos to me.
Okay, what about the war on gays? What about the gay bashing that, that Howard Dean talks about? Because everybody knows Republicans hate gay people, right? I mean, that, 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 that's, in, that's in political science 101, right? They, they practically just put that on the front page. Well, there again, I think that's a criticism that is very overstated. And some of you might be shocked to hear me say that. I think there's a very clear distinction in our issues with the gay community that often gets overlooked. In the modern day and time, in 2012, the main conflict that many Republicans, some Republicans, but by no means all, the main conflict that some of us have with the gay community is this, gay marriage. That's pretty much it. Now, we're told, and you hear sometimes, that Republicans would make uh, would, would outlaw being gay or we, we, would make Ill, we would make gay activity illegal. Come on. When have you seen recently a Republican take the position that we should put legislation in that would outlaw gay behavior or gay sex or any of that other stuff? You don't see that. Sure, there's some laws in some places that are already on the books, but no one's really proposing new ones. Instead, the issue is just the idea of gay marriage. You know, we, we are not trying to make it illegal to be gay or to obstruct gays from engaging in gay behavior. Uh, now, many of us don't agree with that behavior and don't understand it, and maybe not, maybe we're not terribly sympathetic to it, and I, I would put myself in that boat, I'll be honest about it. Uh, but at the same time, many of us in this generation, even if we are uncomfortable with uh, that sort of behavior to a degree, we still believe that, you know what, if it's behind closed doors, whatever. You know, if the gay person wants to go do gay things in the privacy of their own home, really, I don't care. I, and, and most of us, you might be shocked to find, most of us who are younger conservatives really don't care about it either. Now, in addition, there's some of us, not all, but some of us who would be totally fine with some sort of civil union setup that affords non-married people of whatever persuasion to have the same property rights and advantages that married people have. I've advocated for that very idea on this program. What many of us take issue with is simply the concept that marriage, which is an idea and a concept that is steeped both in religion and tradition, what we take issue with is that the idea of marriage should be altered by society to reflect something that is at, odd, that is at odds with the religious and traditional aspects that marriage is based on. That's our only problem. Really, aside from that one issue, there's not much of a problem between the Republicans and gays. We really aren't bashing him. There's no war on gays. It's just, hey, maybe we don't need to go so far as to call it marriage and, and act as though society is, is endorsing that lifestyle. That's all we're saying. Okay, one more. And this is one that Dean kind of hinted at. He didn't specifically mention it, but you hear it all the time. Supposedly, conventional wisdom would say Republicans bash minorities all the time. Or we have a problem with minorities. Or, oh my God, we're racist. You... you I mean, you can't turn around without hearing that Republicans are racist. But yet again, I think that criticism is way overblown. Give me an example. Look at the Trayvon Martin media coverage that we've been uh, subjected to recently. That, that issue is still going on, and it's still a big water cooler topic in America. Uh, as you look at the coverage of this topic, it's harder and harder to find coverage that focuses on whether or not George Zimmerman violated the law by shooting Trayvon Martin. When you look at all the analysis and all the interviews and all the different uh, talking points that are out there on this, nobody's really focusing on that aspect of it. Instead, what people are focusing on is whether or not George Zimmerman was or was not a racist. And that's the big debate that seems to be going on in the liberal media in their coverage of this. And really, the question of whether Zimmerman is a racist or not is irrelevant to what should be the important issue. The important issue being Trayvon Martin is dead. Did that happen through legal means or illegal means? That's really what we should be focusing on. And the more I see of this, the more it seems like, at least to some people on the left, it's almost as though if Zimmerman is a racist, that that, 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 that characteristic or that that idea, that, that action, if you will, is a bigger crime than the murder to them. I'm sorry, I don't see where that makes sense. You know, the left is so focused in this case, and this, and this is where I make the connection to how they react to race in general. In this case, the left seems to be so focused on racism that they are overlooking and ignoring the actual issues that are in play. In this case, they're overlooking whether or not this was a murder. 
All they seem to care about is, was Zimmerman racist or was he not? Well, if you take that out and you expand that to other discussions of race we have in this country and to discussions of the black community in our urban areas and so forth, the left seems to consistently do that same thing. They seem to be so focused on racism that they overlook the actual problems that they're trying to solve. And this is where the conflict between the two, the two parties seems to come to a head on this issue. We on the right do not bash minority races. Instead, we focus on issues other than racism. We focus on issues that have more of an impact in these areas, in the, the pathology in these areas and the crime and so forth, than racism does. In terms of the challenges that minorities face, we're looking at the root causes. We're not looking at the red herring of racism that the left seems to look at. In fact, we've talked about on this show that many times that you know that idea that all of the crime and the poverty and so forth is connected strictly to racism, that that's absolute hogwash. We've shown you numbers and statistics and research on here that totally disproves that point. Information from Walter E. Williams, Thomas Sowell, some great economists who have blown that theory right out of the water, but yet the left continues to cling to it. The right is focused on the issues in the urban communities, black communities, minority communities, if you want to call them that. We're focused on the issues that are the actual cause of the pathology that you see there. Issues such as the breaking up of the family in those areas, the rampant crime and disrespect for the law in those areas, the ubiquitousness of government assistance in those areas, and the negative, the negative impact that those types of assistance and programs have had on those inner cities. We believe, and in fact it's pretty well proven, that those factors are far bigger factors in constructing and maintaining the negative environment that exists in many of our minority communities than pure racism or discrimination ever could be or ever has been. And that's what we focus on. So that's where you see there's a big difference. It's not a war on minorities. We're not even bashing minorities. We're simply focused Instead of being focused on the red herring of racism, we're focused on the actual problems that are causing the issues. The bottom line is this. The Republican Party, the GOP, the American right conservatives do not have a war on women, a war on immigrants, a war on minorities, or any other such thing. Instead, if we have a war on anything, we have a war on irresponsibility. Think about that for a second. We don't have a war on women, war on minorities, war on any of these other things. Our only war is a war on irresponsibility. Now to understand that, let's go back and take a quick look in these different areas of who specifically we're bashing and what we're specifically saying. When it comes to the alleged war on women, our issue is not with all women. Our issue is with a small number of women who feel that they should not have to pay for their birth control and others should pay for it for them. That's it. Very small group of people. Very isolated incident. War on immigrants? No, it's a war on illegal immigrants. The vast majority of immigrants that are over here legally? No problem with them. War on minorities? Heck no. We want minorities, minority communities to be as profitable as everywhere else is. Our problem is with the crime and the breakup of the family and all of those things that have caused and prolonged the pathology in those areas. At the end of the day, all of these characterizations of the left of these various wars that the Republicans are supposedly engaged in, all of this is simply a distraction to keep voters from focusing on really the high priority issues, what should be the high priority issues anyway. It's meant to keep the voters from focusing on things like the economy or from focusing on the unconstitutionality of Obamacare, or to keep them from focusing on our declining dominance on the international stage, all of which are issues that Obama can legitimately be criticized for. But all of this comes down to priority. You know, what's more important, whether a woman can get free birth control or whether our nation is going broke? I think it's whether our nation's going broke. What's more important, whether gays can get married or whether the government is taking away your ability to make your own health care decision. It all comes down to priority. You know, I, I, here's an, a great example, a great illustration to drive home the point here. Imagine, as hard as it is, imagine that your house caught on fire one night. You're in bed, you're asleep, the smoke detector goes off, 
you wake up you pretty quickly realize your house is on fire so you hustle around you get your wife out of bed you get your kids out of bed you get everybody out of the house and everybody's out safe and sound but your house is on fire and the, the fire department comes over they start putting out the blaze so while you're on the front lawn with your family thankfully everybody's out alive the fire department's putting out the fire what would you think in the middle of all of that if your wife walked up to you and said you know honey we really need some new wallpaper in the bathroom what i mean you'd ask her how in the heck are you thinking of that right now our house is on fire our house is on fire and the only thing you can think about is whether there's new wallpaper in the bathroom there's a disconnect in priority level there it wouldn't make sense for her to say that but yet i think that we're in a similar position with the democratic party right now while we on the right are focused on important issues things like the economy things like jobs things like gas prices things like Obamacare and the, and, and the horrible things that will spring forth from that, things like Ill illegal immigration. It's the left that's focused on, frankly, crap like birth control, gay marriage, whether some girl can be a member at the, the country club where they have the masters. Really? That's the stuff that's important to you right now? You're, I'm looking around the world and, and, and seeing all the chaos and turmoil and you're worried if someone can get birth control. You're worried if the CEO of IBM can get into Augusta National Country Club. Really? That's where your priorities are? Doesn't make sense. Not to a reasonable person. The Republican Party in 2012, for all of our faults, for all of our back and forth and bickering, for all of our different ideas that we're fighting amongst each other about right now, for all of that, we are at least the party that is focusing on what is important. And you can look back at any of the Republican presidential debates, and that should be as clear as a bell to you. On the other hand, it's the Democratic Party, including this president, that is focusing on made up, air quotes here, issues that are largely irrelevant in the big picture of the future of our nation. Do not be fooled. Don't get distracted because that's exactly what they want. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next week.